What is going on guys? Welcome to this special video. Today we're going to learn Python as fast as possible. So let us get right into it. All right guys, so this video is going to be quite intense. I wanna mention before we start that we're not going to install Python. You have to have Python installed already. You have to have some sort of development environment set up. I'm just going to teach the language itself. So let's get started. We open up a new file here. We create a text document, we call it main.py and there you go, we have our first Python file. We open it up in the idle or in any other text editor and we can start by writing a hello world program. So print hello world, this is how you output text in Python. Very simple, there you go. If you run this, you see hello world on the screen. We can also define variables, x equals 10, y equals 20, and print x plus y gives you the result of the calculation x plus y. This works because those two things are integers. This is a data type. If we put quotation marks around them, they're strings, and we no longer get 30 as a result, but 10, 20. We can see that this happens when we run the module. You can see we're going to get 10, 20 as a result because we're just appending one string onto the end of another string. Uh, plus is not the only operator that we have. We can also have x equals 10, y equals 20, and we can print not only the addition, we can print x minus y, we can print x times y, we can print x divided by y, and we can try the modulus operation here as well, which means that divide 10 by 20 and then give me the remainder as a result here. Those are the arithmetic operators. We also have comparison operators. Comparison operators would be something like x equals 10, y equals 20, print x being less than y. This can either result in true or false. If it's true, it means that the statement is true. x is in fact less than y. If I say x is greater than y, we're going to print false. We can also have greater than or equals to. We can have less than or equals to. We can have equals to or not equals to. Now, besides those, we also have logical operators. So we can not only print x less than y, but we can also say and x is larger than two, for example. In this case, both is true, x is less than y, and x is larger than two. Uh, we can also do the same thing with or, which means one of them has at least to be true, and we can do not, which negates whatever result we get. So we can also say not true, which results in false. Then we also have uh, different other operators, like assignment operators. So let's say we have x equals 10, then we can say x plus equals 20, which essentially is the same thing as x equals x plus 20, or x equals x plus, uh, in this case, if we change whatever this is to y, we would get x plus y. We can do the same thing with minus equals, with times equals, with divided equals, with all the different um, arithmetic operators that we already know. We can also do it with bitwise operators, but usually I don't teach bitwise operators in beginner uh, tutorials because those are not really relevant for beginners. Then once we have that, we can also learn about conditional programming. In Python, we can not only execute statements, we can also say execute only if something is true. So we can say x equals 10. We can say if x is less than 20, then do something, which I write down here. For example, I can just print a message here, x, y, z, which is going to be printed every time when x is less than 20 and otherwise we're going to do something else. If I don't wanna have just if and else, I can also append elif branches, which basically means, okay, x is not less than 20, but x can at least be less than 30. And even if that, and if that is not true, we can just do the else branch here. So this is a basic if else elif tree. We can just decide when we do what, but oftentimes uh, we're not going to want to do this on static values, we want to do that on input. So we're going to say, a number is the input of a user. So we're going to say input. This is the function that we use to get input from the user. Please enter a number and the user is going to input a number. Now the problem is this function here returns a string. So we need to typecast it into an integer by calling the int function onto this. So the user inputs a number and then we get the integer from that number. So if the user inputs something like 40, we get 40 as a result as a number and then we can work with that and we can say okay if the number that the user put in is less than 10 we can print that the number is less than 10 and otherwise we can print that this is not the case so just a basic not we can try that to see how this works no i don't want to configure this run the module there you go and i can now input a number let's say 80 and it says not because 80 is not less than 10 run this again and then I can input six and you can see it's less than 10. Now, sometimes you will want to execute code not only once, but multiple times as long as a certain condition is met. So let's say we have a number and this number is zero. We can say while 
number, this is the keyword while, while the number is less than 10, we can increase that number. Obviously, then it's going to end up at 10 sooner or later, uh, or above 10. And then we can do something else like print the number. In this case, we would just be counting from zero to 10. And we can see that this is the case actually from one to 10 because zero is the first value and then we increase it by one before we print it. So we start at one. This is a basic while loop. We have while the condition and then what we want to do as long as this condition is met. We also have another loop, which is the full loop. So we can say for i in range 10, for example, in this case would be for i iterating over the collection of numbers from zero to nine, 10 numbers, range is just a function that produces this uh, sequence. And then we can just print i in this case. And the for loop is mainly used to iterate over lists. We're going to talk about lists in a second here, but that's the basic idea. And the second was literally because now we're going to talk about lists and we can say, for example, my list equals, and then I can use square brackets to have some values in here. I can say 10, 20, 30, and then I can say four value in my list, for example, and I can print that value to get all the values from my list. And you can see if I run the module, we get 10, 20, 30, as you can see. Now in a list, I can not only have values of the same data type in Python, I can also have strings in here. Uh, and I can also have a Boolean in here, which is also data type true false. Uh, we have floating point numbers like that. And we also have complex numbers, but we're not going to talk about those here. So if I run this again, you can see that I have all sorts of different data types here. And this is how you work with a list. Now we can also go ahead and say my list dot append to append new values here. So I can say hello to and then I can print the whole list as a whole thing. So I don't have to iterate over it using a full loop, I can just print it. And as you can see, I have this new value in here as well. Now strings in Python can be defined with double quotation marks or with single quotation marks. So this would also be uh, a fine string. And yeah, now then we also have functions, functions are just blocks of reusable code, and I can define them with a def keyword def my function, for example, and then I specify a block of code here, for example, print hello world is just my function is the functionality and I can now call my function instead of coding them a functionality manually all the time, like that. So I call it four times and we're going to see four times hello world. Now in this case it doesn't make a lot of sense because I just have one line, but I can of course also go ahead and do many different things. So for example, I don't know, I can get x equals 10 y equals 20. And then I can go ahead and print the result here. Also, again, a trivial function, but in this case, it would be at least three lines that I can represent using one line, just calling the function here. Functions can also have parameters. So for example, I can pass X and Y here as parameters, instead of setting them in the function, then I can print their result. In this case, I have to call my function, but I have to pass parameters like 1020, for example, and I can pass different parameters all the time. And of course, we're not limited by data types. Again, I can pass whatever I want. But of course, I cannot really add a string and a number here. So when I run this, you can see that we can do that functions can also have default values. So I can say y equals 10. That makes y optional. So all those calls are still possible. But in addition to that, now this is also a possible call because y is going to be 10 by default, which is why we get 40 as a result here. Now let's get back to collections since we only talked about lists. First of all, I want to mention that you can access elements of a list when you say my list one, two, three, whatever. Um, you basically have to say print my list and then you specify so called index to access the individual elements, you start counting at zero. So this is position one or index zero position two or index one. So if I say my list one, I will not get the first element, but I would get the second element. So in this case, a two. And if I run this, you're going to see that this is the case. As you can see, but besides lists, we also have dictionaries. So I can say my dict equals and then I can specify key value pair. So key value pair means we have one element that is unique and referring to the other element, which is the value and the value doesn't have to be unique. So key K one or key one could be the key, for example, separated by a colon from the value and the value could be seven, eight or 78. Then a key can also be 99. And the value can be true, for example, so the data types again are not too important. But here, of course, we don't say my dictionary and index, but we say my dictionary and we refer to the key to get the value. So K one, we, we specify that key to get the value 78. As you can see, then we also have sets and tuples, a tuple, my tuple is basically a list. And this list is immutable. So we use parentheses here, and I have some values, but those values cannot change. So I cannot remove them, I cannot pop them, I can not add values. Whereas in a list, if I have a list, let's say I have an empty list here, I can just say my list dot append to add values, I can say my list dot remove 
to remove values. If you want to know all the list functions, I recommend looking up the documentation. Then we also have sets. Uh, my set is basically initialized with curly brackets. And in here we can only have, uh, we don't have any duplicate values. So those are mathematical sets. Uh, and that's basically it for lists. Now let's talk about exception handling. Sometimes when you program, you're going to do stuff that's not okay or stuff is going to happen during runtime that is not okay. For example, let's say you have a number or N1 is going to be a user input and N2 is also going to be a user input and the user is inputting some numbers. We of course type gas them into integers. Now, first of all, here already we could have an exception because if we enter something that is not a number as a string, uh, then we can of course not typecast it, but let's say we have proper values. Then of course, if I divide N1 divided by N2, if I make this calculation, I can get a zero division error because I'm not allowed to divide by zero. And if I don't catch this thing, so let's go ahead and print this. If I don't catch this thing, we're going to get a problem that the program is going to terminate. Uh, it's going to stop working no matter what I do afterwards. So let's say 70 divided by zero. And you can see I have a zero division error. Not only get I, do I get an error message, but every code that I would write down here would not be executed anymore. So I have to catch that exception. And I do this with a try block. In a try block, I do whatever I want to do. And if it fails, I'm going to the accept block. And here I can print error messages and handle the errors. So error handle or error handling actually and this is how you do it. Of course, you can also uh, also catch the individual uh, exception types. So I can say accept zero division error here, division error, if I want to catch this specific one, and then I can say cannot divide by zero, then I can accept other errors, for example, I don't know, index out of whatever error, all the different error types, and then I can have one general accept block in the end as well. And this is basic error handling in Python, then we can also talk about the file operations we can write into files, we can read from files. In order to write into files, I just have to say file equals open, I specify the file path. So file.txt, for example, in writing mode. So the next thing is the writing mode, uh, or actually the mode. And if I, uh, if I pass W, it's going to be the writing mode. If I pass R, it's going to be the reading mode. And then we're just going to say file.write, hello world, and then file dot close. I'm going to run this. And it's done. And I look at the desktop and you can see that we have Hello World in this file here. Then of course, I can also go ahead and read from this file again. So I can just say file equals open file dot txt in reading mode. And then I'm going to print file dot read. And I'm going to close the file afterwards. If I run this now, you can see that we get hello world as an output. All right, guys, so that was my little Python speed run. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope some of you guys got some value out of it. So if you have an exam tomorrow, and you know, zero Python, maybe this can help you. Um, and if you like this video, let me know in the comment section down below, hit the like button. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel to see more future videos for free. And other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. And bye.